If you are looking for RGB LED fans, you can choose between different companies like NZXT with their Air RGB fans, Thermaltake with the Ring series, Corsair with its HD series and Cooler Master with the Master Fan Pro series. The fans either have a lightened LED ring around black blades like the ones from NZXT and Thermaltake or the blades are white or transparent and lightened by LEDs placed in the middle or at the edge of the fan, like the ones from Corsair and Cooler Master. All fans are available in a 120 or 140 mm diameter. Whether you take the one or the other depends on the size of your case. And if you want to use them on a liquid CPU cooler, it also depends on the radiator size. Let's have a closer look at the box. I chose the NZXT Air RGB fans, probably because of the design. I want to use them in the back of my case, so I took the 140mm version. There are different packages available, if you don't have any NZXT fans yet, you definitely need the u controller. On the side of the box you get some information in different languages. The back side includes even more information. On top you can see the different mounting options for the fans, in the back, on top or in the front. For controlling the fans you need NZXT software called CAM. There seem to be some issues with the software due to other reviews on YouTube. As I haven't tried it out yet, I can confirm that by now. In the specifications you get information about the fan speed that is adjustable from 500 to 1500 RPM, the noise level settles between 22 and 33 dBA, the fluid dynamic bearings should last for 6 years and you need a 4-pin PWM connector to connect the fans to the motherboard. The u controller on the other hand needs a 5 volt Molex connector and has two output channels. The system requirements are not very challenging as you only need Windows 7 and an internet connection. Although you only have two channels on the controller, you can link up to five fans together per channel. Further you can use lighting presets and the RPM mode. The blades provide an optimal airflow and keep the noise low in combination with the fluid dynamic bearings. Let's open the box now. Opening NZXT boxes can be a bit tricky, so let's just move forward a few seconds. Here we go. The u controller is actually smaller than I thought. The design is pretty simple. On the upper side one half is glossy, the other one is matte finished. The lower side contains information for the power supply and offers four screw holes to mount the controller into the PC case. It has four connectors for the power supply, USB 2.0 and the fan ports. Here we have all the connection cables. There are a lot of them. And last but not least, the stars of the box. Ta-da! Of course, the menu may not be missing, it contains a component list with all the same looking cables and provides a short installation guide. Put that back, arrange it a bit prettier and here we go! This is what the box contains. Let's take a closer look at the parts now. We already saw the u controller, here it is without the foil the lower side with the four screw mounts and the four connection ports for power supply USB 2.0 and the fans. The fans are made of plastic material. The high quality fluid dynamic bearings should last for six years. To lower the vibration sounds, the back side also contains a rubber material on the mounting corners. On the bottom side, there are in and outputs to connect the fan to the u controller and to other fans. Also, every fan includes a fixed 4-pin cable to connect to the main board. As it is very confusing which of these cables is for what, I made a short explanation here and I will explain the differences now. These two cables look the same. Sometimes cables differ in colors, but not these two. They are both white and black. Also, the ins and outs are the same. So what is the difference now? If you look at the connectors, you can see a difference between these two. 
This one goes into the U-plus controller and this one into the fan. That's why the left is the fan to fan cable and the right is the controller cable. The user's manual unfortunately won't explain this to you. The next one is a shorter version of the fan to fan cable. It looks the same, it is just shorter. And this tiny cable here is the connector between these two. So you can expand them. The thicker cable is for low noise. You get two of them as there are two fans in the box. There's also a Molex adapter for power supply as well as a USB 2.0 adapter to the motherboard. The box also contains a few screws. Here you have the M5 screws. The other ones are not in the description, but I assume they are for mounting the U-Plus controller in the case. How do you have to connect all these cables with the controller and with the mainboard now? First you grab your U-Plus controller and look for the side with the connection ports. Plug the power supply cable into the controller. The Molex adapter gets into your power supply. Then connect the USB port with the appropriate cable. Choose one of the fan ports, take the controller cable and plug it in. Make sure it is the output. The other end of the cable goes into the input of the fan. Afterwards you can connect both fans through the output of this fan and the input of the other fan with the fan to fan cable. You can also leave them unconnected. Last but not least, connect the fan cable to the low noise cable and then to the main board. For those of you who expect to see the fans in action, here are some example pictures with the different modes from the NZXT website because I haven't built the fans into my case yet. I hope you found my in-depth unboxing and cable connection tutorial helpful. If so, make sure to leave a like, if not, put a comment down below. Thanks for watching, bye bye.